G'day guys. All right, so a brand new Essential Outlander 20, uh, 20 foot six caravan, couples van. Um, it's actually a really nice layout, this van. It's, yeah, it's got a nice vibe inside it. So um, these guys, we've actually already done uh, some work for this couple. We did the canopy build on their, um, their Ford Ranger, which they tow this van with. Um, next gen Ford Ranger. Um, so they bought this van with um, a basic AGM system built into it. Um, so it's got a BM Pro um, system. It had a couple of solar panels on the roof, a couple of batteries down on the chassis. So the owner contacted us with the intention of running an incinerating toilet which when they first told us they wanted to use an incinerating toilet, we sort of questioned as to why. Um, you know, why not a composting toilet or, you know, obviously everyone has their opinions about composting versus chemical. Um, so we had to do some maths on how often, how much, you know, all those sort of things. So it's a 2000 watt um, unit. The incinerating toilet when it's running uses 2000 watts. So, essentially, we had to come up with a system that wouldn't give them any problems when they were off-grid and they wanted to use their toilet. Because you can imagine, you know, most people either have a composting or a chemical, they can just clean their toilet bin out and away they go again. Completely unreliable on power. Completely unreliable on power. If you run out of power in this van, can't use a toilet anymore, so you're going in the bush, which, you know, might be okay for some people, but when you just bought a brand new, very expensive caravan, you don't really want to be not using the luxuries of the caravan. So, what we designed was a 24 volt system, um, and we've gone with 24 volt because of the very large inverter that we've gone with so we've we've installed a 5000 watt inverter in here so um, it's a full Vitron system uh, 5000 watt um, a 24 volt inverter charger um, and what I've done in this van is I've actually split the 240 volt circuit up so there's a dedicated circuit for the toilet and a dedicated circuit for the rest of the van so the air conditioner and the power points and the hot water system all on their own um, circuit so essentially they've got a split um, can't overload one circuit because the inverter actually has more capacity than a single 16 amp circuit so we have to split that up um, now the battery system is huge um, it's a 15 kilowatt hour battery um, which if we put that into context for people it's 1200 amp hours at 12 volts so if you were to put a 12 volt system into this van you'd be looking at 1200 amp hour battery um, what we've gone for is three 200 amp hour 24 volt batteries um, which equates to about 15 kilowatt hours uh, what we've also done in this van is is put them as we normally would do into the two seats but as you can see from the build here because the battery is so large we've taken up one full seat area with the battery um, with the shunt and fusing isolation over this side and then we've got charging over this side so um, with with the charges obviously the inverter charger is doing its thing so that's all um, connected to the battery in its own right we've got five separate solar regulators in this build um, three for the configuration of the roof mounted solar. Uh, so we've got three separate circuits coming down from the roof for three separate solar regulators um, to maximize the efficiency. So three different types of solar panels to, to you know maximize the roof space we've got up there. Because the battery's so big, the roof mounted solar isn't gonna be enough to be able to recharge this battery um, if they use this system as they intend. Um, so they're going to need to put 
external panels out or portable panels. So what we've actually done is given them two separate circuits. So one out the right hand side of the caravan and one at the rear of the van um, going into their own two separate MPPTs as well. So no solar regulator, no solar panel combination is, is combined. So we've separated all separate solar panels out. They can have up to 600 watts at the rear and up to 600 watts at the side. So potentially with the roof mounted solar, they can have 2.4 kilowatts of solar if they need to, um, which, you know, in, in some occasions they probably will need to do that. Um, outside of that, we've got a 24 volt to 12 volt converter, which then feeds back into the original system for all their lights and USBs and pump because everything in the van is still 12 volt. So we've maintained all of that. Um, we've gone for a touch, a seven inch touch GX up here, which is a nice, a nice addition to the van. It's nice and sleek, um, into where all their existing equipment was mounted. Um, so the roof mounted solar, we, as I say, we've got, um, almost 1200 watts of solar on the roof. Um, this van, this van's roof configuration was a little bit tricky to deal with it's it wasn't uh, you know it wasn't that easy just because of the location of the separate hatches they've actually got four roof hatches in this van two in the bathroom two in the living space obviously an air conditioner um, and we've actually also installed a carafan as well so the carafan takes up a little bit of roof space um, but because of the type of you know, usage this van's gonna get. Caravan is one of the most important things. You don't wanna come into a, a, a lovely van like this filled with orange dust after you've driven 300 Ks along the Hyde and Norseman Road, just for an example, speaking from experience. So this build has been um, quite unique. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very large battery system and a very large inverter. Um, normally this system, we wouldn't put a battery this size into a van normally because of the, the, um, just, you, it's very difficult to recharge a battery of this size from roof mounted solar. But you've managed to achieve it with the with other portables. options. Yeah. yeah. And these people are living and working in this van permanently? They are. Right. Yeah. So they, they are traveling around Australia. They do house seating for people, pet seating for people. Um, they sort of semi-manage rural properties for, um, for people when they go on holidays and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, they're, they're traveling around in this van, it's their home. So it's literally a tiny, tiny home. It's basically on a tiny wheels. home on wheels, yep. Mm. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's the, the, the extra bits and pieces that they've got, I mean, they've got, a gas cooker here, which I'm not 100% sure on what they're going to do. Um, I suspect they'll probably swap that out for an induction because um, they've got that capacity to be able to do that. Um, they've got their hot water service, which is electric. Um, I'm not sure what they're going to do with that. There's a possibility that they're talking about maybe changing that out for something, um, something else, essentially. Um, they don't have a diesel heater in this van yet. I suspect that'll probably be something that they will do in the future, even though they can run their air conditioner off their battery pretty comfortably. Um, we've just finished doing a test overnight of the system and um, we ran the van. Uh, the van came out of the shed yesterday around 10 o'clock in the morning with a full battery. I had it on charge on 240 from the inverter charger for um, a period of time to get it to 100% to get everything synchronized. Um, pulled it out here and then switched everything on and we've run the air conditioner pretty much since 10 o'clock yesterday morning um, on 22 degrees and we've also had the hot water system running and we've and, come out and the fridge and the toilet and the fridge and the toilet but everything's on because we've switched the inverter on so all the everything's able to be on so the pumps running um, hot water systems running, fridges running, um, 
air conditioner was running. So aircon was on all night? Aircon was on all night, hot water system was on all night. Um, and we came out this morning at 84%. So, um, you know, it's a, it's about nine o'clock in the morning now, but the PB charger on the, on the Victron system is saying 430 watts. So, you know, at nine o'clock in the morning, we're already pushing in quite a significant amount mm -hmm. into the battery to recharge it. So we're, you know, like 16% of 15 kilowatt hours is, you know, um, two point something kilowatt hours. So at 400 watts, you're gonna put that in over a period of about six or seven hours, I would say. But obviously as the sun comes up, you'll get, mm -hmm. you know, more recharging and it'll happen quicker. So mm -hmm. I suspect by about one o'clock in the afternoon, they'll be fully recharged on the battery. Um, and that's like I say, with the air conditioner still running, still fridge running, still hot water system running. So the system is super efficient. Um, it is a very big system. So yeah, um, if you do have any questions on this system or uh, any systems like it, um, don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, we're more than happy to answer any questions. Cheers guys.